my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a fresh episode of FM21 and our Project Black Sea series and we are going to get Season 7 underway today. Last episode is linked above for you my friends, make sure you check that one out. I have realised that I look a complete mess. I've just, I've just sat down, I've pressed record and yeah, I don't know, can't find my hat. I don't know where it's gone, and the barn is all over the place. Thank God, are we getting it cut soon? But, uh, my friends, none of that matters because we're going to be paying attention to Football Manager anyway and what Season 7 has in uh, has installed. Um, basically, lots has changed, and more is going to change over the first few episodes, I think. Uh, we're going to get into it right now. I want to explain all. Champions League's where we're going to start because that's where we start every new season at the moment. Let's do this. So my friends, transfers, money, let's cover that first. Let's cover those bases. Um, the wage budget was astronomically improved. It went from 40k to 170k. Mental. But we only got £5 million pounds worth of transfer budget. Now, lots has happened where the transfers are concerned, and I'm going to fill you in. But first and foremost, let me show you some players that I'm looking at and that I'm trying to bring into the football club to basically pack out the team. All will be explained a bit more when you see the ins and outs. Um, we've got this uh, Soren Stefan. I'm trying to bring him in as a backup right-sided midfielder. That kind of gives something away, doesn't it? But all will be explained. So yeah, I'm trying to bring him in as a backup right-sided midfielder. I think he looks quite good. I was trying to do... A, 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 I'm trying to do a loan deal for him with a potential fee in there uh, just for this season. Um, I've also been looking at Petko Angelov, but they want mad, mad money for him. Like, And it's, it's transfer budget we don't have because I've spent it on someone else. Um, so yeah, that's not looking likely, but I'm going to still try to bring him into the football club. We've got this youngster that I'm looking at. I've got a 9k bid in for him, so we'll just see what happens. He'll just come in and go into the youth academy. Uh, obviously, we've got Crusado joining later in the season. I'm looking at Florin uh, Damien as well as a potential loan bid for the season as a backup left back and I am uh, also tracking this guy I can't seem to get a deal put together I'd love to have him come in as a backup right back just doesn't look like it's going to happen there's lots going on basically where this transfer window is concerned uh, as far as outs are concerned uh, Marjanovic we've rejected these bids we're getting astronomical money coming in for him but this is one that I need to cover um, and this is one of the reasons why we're looking at backup left backs and right midfielders and all this sort of stuff now uh, 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 Verdanikov is in the last year of his contract and bids came in for him and I rejected them and he's basically turned around and said I want to leave um, you know we tried to offer him a new contract and he just isn't interested so I, it's one of those situations I've been left in I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and let him go we've got a couple of bids in for like 1.1 million which is a massive upgrade on what we paid for him and we have a good left back in Tasev anyway but um, I still feel like that's going to be an area we're going to have to improve before that transfer window shuts uh, but yeah let's get to the transfers ladies and gents so first and foremost uh, you will see that Racim has left the football club. Um, he's still available, actually, on a free transfer. I don't think he's going to find a club. I just don't really think he's all that good. And then you've got Bonev, who is uh, still being tracked as well. He's available on a free transfer. We decided to let both those players go because they're not really at the level we need them to be anymore. Uh, we need to be signing far, far better players than that. Uh, so we'll go through the outs first, and then we'll go through the ins. You'll see there's only four players come in, but lots of people have left the football club a few of these um were really not what i wanted to happen just just not at all uh the the merzic one in particular uh so we'll cover that first bojo merzic has left he's gone to fire nord i'm absolutely gutted about this one um he had a minimum free release clause and i didn't know i just i didn't know about it it was 1.2 million and a few clubs came in and they they activated it he was actually in the last year of his deal and I was going to offer him a new contract. And then they've all activated that and he decided to sign with them. He's on five grand a week at Feyenoord. Um, that's really good money. But he really, really 
is a top top looking player, isn't he? Yeah, he didn't do too much for us. He didn't pull up any trees last season, but I think at 20 years of age and the abilities he's, he's got, he would have been a massive naysay uh, in the team. Martin Del Duca is next. We let him leave. Um, I just didn't really feel like Martin Del Duca was ever going to get to the level we needed him to. And I think when you look at the signings we've made, we've made some better signings and they're better centre midfielders than he was. We signed him on a free. We've sold him for 225k. Uh, so we've made some money on the player. Plaman Petkov is up next. I decided to sell Petkov. We need to improve that left-hand side massively. And when you see the players we've signed, you're going to see that we have improved the left-hand side massively. Um, so, yeah, we've let him leave. Um, we got all right money for him, I believe. Yeah, 200k. We signed him on a free. We got 200k for him. He had actually uh, played a couple of games this season. But uh, I thought it was time to let him go on his merry, merry way. Um, next up was uh, Sonev. He came back from his loan. He's 22 now. And unfortunately... He played plenty of games for us, didn't he, uh, for a few years. Uh, you know, he played 16 in this season, four in those. He wasn't terrible. He went out on loan, never really did much when he went out on loan. And I just think his development hasn't gone the way I wanted it to. So I've decided to cash in. It's not a lot of money. It's only 51k. He was in the last year of his contract. Um, but it's money. It's in the bank. Martin Tomash, he was one that was in the U system, not going to develop last year of his contract, and he wanted silly, silly money, so decided to let him go. He went for 45k. Uh, Kushev wasn't going to develop last year again, so I've just let him go. Um, we got 20k for him. Koev, the same. We got 5k for him. And then there's a bunch of players I've allowed to go out on loan. Tony St uh, Stankov's gone out on loan. He was pretty good for us, weren't he, last season? But I've signed a new strike. So we've let him go. Daniel Petkov is a winger that's developing quite nicely from the academy. We've let him go out on loan. Uh, Evgeny Mitov has gone out on loan this season. He actually didn't play enough for me last year. Um, and I'm worried that he's another one where his develop development might um, start to kind of like tail off as a result. So I've allowed him to go on loan for this season. And Oliver Spokoski is another one I've allowed to go out on loan as well this year. He's gone out on loan as a centre-back. Uh, and yeah, hopefully all of those players players will get plenty of game time now to the signings that we've made ladies and gents now i've managed to pick up two really good players on free transfers and then there's two that i've played a lot of money for especially in terms of latex two million pound up front uh for both these players it's pretty mad but when you see the level of player we're signing i think you will all be pretty happy about it but first up joel delessandro a um, argentinian center midfielder comes into the football club on a free transfer from Boca Junior four thousand pound a week it's a lot of money but he's 19 years of age has got lots and lots of time to develop and I just feel like he is a step up on what we had at the football club already and we're trying to build a team good enough to just get us past you know these qualifying stages easy and potentially the group stage in the Champions, Champions League just baby steps so we can keep improving the reputation of the football club but yeah he is a phenomenal phenomenal looking player and I'm really happy to have him at the football club uh Jakob Lesko is up next uh, another player we got on a free transfer and he looks ridiculous doesn't he I'm actually going to retrain him as a centre midfielder I think potentially a box to box player because of the finishing his engine isn't that good for box to box you know like his pace and whatnot but um you know he's finishing his dribbling first touch he's a very determined player which I find actually helps with uh with these uh, box to box players even though it's um not really noted but he just looks so so good he he was let go he was actually let go by Spartak uh, Tanava from Slovakia and we managed to pay absolutely nothing for him. I've lost the player now. There we go. Yeah, we paid nothing for him. I think that's mad. He's only on 1.5k a week as well. I think there's a minimum free release clause. Yeah, 2.1 million. It is what it is. You know, like these players want it because it kind of protects them. Uh, he wants to use this as a stepping stone. But I don't care. We've signed him for nothing. We get 2 million for him. We get 2 million for him. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Uh, next up, my friends, is that of Radoslav Kostov. And we've actually gone and we've uh, we've stolen this player from a rival in Levski Sofia. Um, and he is a really, really good-looking striker. Now, I've done this because I was worried about Zhivkov at the end of last year. He really tailed off last season, Zhivkov. Um, I think after the winter break, he only scored four goals in the remaining part of the season. And that's just not enough. Now, I'm going to be honest, Radoslav uh, Kostov, hasn't hit the ground running I am a little bit worried but he's only 18 he's got a lot of time to develop and I'm sure he will I'm sure he will get going eventually um, you know he's not been playing badly you know he's, he's still involved he just hasn't been scoring the goals but a really really good looking player 800 pound a week I don't think there's a minimum free release goals no there's not so you know he's signed um, signed on till 2030 and we'll just see what happens with him he's a tasty looking striker and then uh, the other other player, my friends, who I've spent quite a lot of money on. By the way, cost of is two million up front, and then there's lots of add-ons to take it up to three point four million. And then the next one, who I've spent money on, one point nine up front, can go up to four point seven. Is that of Sergey uh, Klikin, and he is a Russian left winger, four thousand pound a week. It's a lot of money, but he looks class. I think he's a step up. On Bonev, who we let go. I think he's a step up on Damianov, who was playing regularly last season. I just feel like he's a good looking player. He's already played a game for the club and he was mightily impressive. And I just hope we're going to find ourselves, finally, we're going to find ourselves that consistent left sided midfielder that we've been crying out for for the whole series. And I just feel like. He's a really good looking player. He's getting to the point now where our reputation is at a point where we can sign relatively good young talent, but we can't sign those world class talents just yet. Uh, as far as his contract's concerned, there's no minimum fee release clause, which fills me with utter joy, and I'm really, really happy. Now, I'll tell you to have a look at the squad because, you know, it just it isn't that great. It really isn't that great at the moment. Um, We've, we've managed to keep the two goalkeepers. We've got um, Marjanovic and Iradi is actually filling in as a backup right back at the moment. So then we've got Malinov, uh, Adanov playing centre back. Uh, we've got Tasev playing left back. Werner Nikov isn't really there for the left back position, unfortunately, because um, he's going to be off. Um, you know, he is definitely going to leave because those bids have come in and he's, 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 he said he wants to. We've got uh, Damianov and uh, Klicking going to play left midfield. We've got Dimitrov, Yankov, D'Alessandro, Pozgai um, and Lesko who can play centre mid. And then we've also got, actually, Lesko, Gagliardi, Ivanov can play in the... Um, in the uh, cam position, Ivanov can also fill in at left mid, but then we've only got Topazov who can play right side at the moment, so we definitely need to get that right winger in. So I need two backup fullbacks, a right winger, and then I'm not going to worry about a centre back because I think you know Iradi can fill in there once we get the backup right back, and we've got the other centre back coming in in January, um, and then yeah, we're okay at striker. So I still am looking, I've still got players that I, I need to get into the football club. Um, as far as the form and stuff is concerned, this is how the season started. We played a bunch of friendlies. We won all the friendlies. It's been going really well. I've been tampering a little bit with player positions and it seems to have helped us out a little bit. Uh, I feel like we have got players now that are good enough that we could drop that ball winning midfielder and go to a a bit of a different partnership in the midfield and it's done a pretty good job early doors um, so you will see that we started the season with Cherno um, uh, Varna game 2-1 win in this one we were 2-0 up and we were cruising to be honest they grabbed themselves a consolation goal really late on but Zhivkov and Malinov scored the goals for us then it was Botev Plovdiv uh, Damianov and Zhivkov with the goals really late on you know last 10 minutes we managed to win the game but a good good win against a league rival in the uh, second qualifying round of the Champions League, we drew Dynamo Zagreb and I felt like we could comfortably beat them. So I decided to just play ahead and uh, rather than bring this one to you, we got a 2-0 win in the first leg away from home. Delazandro got his first goal for the football club as well as Ivanov. Uh, then CSK and Moscow. We're up next at CSK Moscow. We're not in Russia. CSK <laughs> Sofia. We're up next even. And we got a 4-1 win against them. Phenomenal, phenomenal performance. Uh, Gagliardi, Topazov with a brace and Ivanov with the other one. They did grab themselves a late consolation goal, uh, though, in the game. 
Then we came up against Zagreb in the second leg, a 4-0 win at home. They had a player sent off in the fifth minute, which it does have to be said, it was unfortunate for him. It kind of took the game away from him very, very early doors. Gagliardi, Tasev, Topazov and Pozgai put the game to bed inside the first 30 minutes and uh, was a really good performance from us. And then game of the or game of the bloody, um, you know, early stages of the season is this one. It was the Super Cup. We came up against CSKA uh, again, and we won by three goals to two. Now, you are going to see that we were 1-0 up through Gagliardi. Uh, Malinov got sent off on the 28th minute for a two-footed challenge. I think he's going to be missing for the, for the league game, um, the next league game. But then we we, grew, we grabbed uh, another two goals. Gaglioli got himself a second. And then Kostov, Radoslav Kostov got his first goal for the football club. We missed two penalties in this game as well, by the way. Topazov and Gagliardi both missed from the spot. So it could have been five. We could have actually been five nil up as well, I believe it was. Um, and then uh, Evgeny... Um, uh, uh, Velikov and uh, Kawane, uh, uh, Kawaya, they scored the goals for CSKA. Nearly, nearly got themselves back in it. Actually, well, it was a phenomenal tie, really, really phenomenal tie, and it brings us up to date. We're going to play these Champions League ties against Feren uh, Varosi. I think is how we say that. They're Hungarian, I believe. Yeah, they're Hungarian team. Now, I think we should be beating them, in all honesty, but I, I wanted to bring it to you just in case. You know, anything can happen, can't it, ladies and gents? So, wanted to bring you this tie, and that's what we're going to do, those two games in today's episode. Um, but let's take a look at the league table. Three wins from three games. Absolutely brilliant start for us, um, and everyone's performing really, really well. As far as the season preview is concerned, they expect us to finish second behind Ludogrets this year, um, which is surprising to me because of how Ludogrets have fallen off. But I took a look at Ludogrets' team. They've got some really, really exciting young prospects coming through. I would love both of their fullbacks. I genuinely think they would both start for us and they've came through their academy. Uh, they've got a good striker. I nearly signed before I ended up going with Kostov instead. So, yeah, it's really interesting, actually, the players they've got. Like you'll see, look, Bitev, they're all in here. Um, really, really good looking team. Uh, it does have to be said. And I believe they've just signed themselves a new goalkeeper as well, who looks sensational. Uh, Gagliardi and Mijanovic have made it into the Dream 11, which is nice. But it's great to see us as one of the league favourites this year because, you know, I feel like we've been slept on the last few years and uh, we really, really shouldn't have been. Uh, Habar have made it back up. Maritza have made it back into the division. So, yeah, we'll just wait and see what happens uh, this year. Reputation of the league has actually dropped by two places which is a surprise um, and I'm a bit sad about that because obviously we need the reputation of the league to be a lot better but that is all I need to talk to you about ladies and gents so let's crack on shall we with the first leg of this Champions League tie um, uh, I, I've rotated the team uh, this is what I'm going to go with. I'm trying to keep everyone healthy because league football is still really important as far as this is, series is concerned. So this is what we're going to go. We're going to go Petrov in goal, Marjanovic and Tasev at fullback, and Danov and Malinov are going to play centre-back. Danov, it has to be said, is really, really starting to impress me. Uh, Pozga is going to play next to D'Alessandro. We're going to go with uh, Klikin and Topazov on the wings. Let's go through the middle and Kostov up top. Danyanov is actually currently injured um, and uh, yeah, that's all I need to really cover you on. And so here we go, ladies and gents. We walk out. We are at home in the first leg, which is always uh, always a plus. And uh, we always love to see it. Let's get rid of these substitutes at the bottom of the page. Or bottom of the screen, I should say. Tasev now on the ball as it does make its way out to them. Let's go into clicking. Uh, he's got it back. Oh, he shanked it. He pulls it just wide, but a very, very early chance. And is that how this game is going to go? I, I would like to think that's how the game's going to go. Um, I'd just like to dispatch of this team and move on into the playoff round. Um, it has been drawn already, and uh, it could potentially be a team we faced before <laughs> in the early stages of the Champions League. So, um we will wait and see as they have a really good opportunity there. It just goes over the bar. I've just uh, demanded a bit more of the boys. See if uh, we can get them fired up. That's a good throw in. Uh, finds its way into Pozgai. Good passing here. Too, too many passes for me to try and commentate along. That's come wide out to uh, uh, Majanovic. Really good stuff. Now into Pozgai. 
guy, Gianni Pozgai, with an absolute rocket of a hit. Beautiful stuff from the Peruvian. And we take a one-goal lead and a one-goal advantage in the first leg, which is amazing to see. I'd just like to put this out of sight, to be honest with you. i just just smash these and... Um, you know, move on with our lives. That's a really good ball in, it does have to be said, from the corner. Um, headed away, though, well dealt with by us. And um, now we try to, to win the ball back, and we do through Lesko. Really, really good closing down from the player there. Um, he is playing Cam in this game. I think he's going to be one of those players who's just going to play in all of the midfield areas because he's so well-rounded. That's good from Topes to win that back. Goes to Posko. What a ball. Kostov has to finish, and he does. Radoslav Kostov, the new striker signing, gets his first Champions League goal for the football club, and that's what you love to see. Zhivkov is still going to play a very big part of this season. I am sh very much sure of that, but... I just felt like we've reached the stage where we have to start looking at better players. And, and, and sentiment has to be, you know, put to one side, unfortunately. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I let Bakir Rasim and Bonev go. They were big parts of the early part of this series, but they're just not good enough anymore. We didn't sell them. We let their contracts run down. Uh, and Bakir Rasim is actually... Uh, a bit of an icon of the football club as well. So um, his favoured personnel and all that. 2 0 half time. Beautiful stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll just tell them to keep going in the second half. It's been a relatively easy day at the office thus far. Uh, Malinov finds Leko. That is a really, really wonky pass, that one, isn't it? Um, it's not good at all from the player. And we win this back. We can through Adanov, whose heading is in his strong point, but yet yeah, he always seems to do well. Uh, Malinov now. He's going to go all the way back to the keeper. And we're just going to reset, I would imagine. Try to play out from the back and um, and get going again. Tassev on the football. Delisandro into Lesko. Ball over the top. Kostov. He tried the cheeky chip and it didn't come off. The dinky dink. It didn't work for the player there. Uh, Pozgai. Ball over the top. It's not quite worked out. It's gone to the keeper who has cleared that straight away. And it was actually a really good ball from their keeper, but well defended. Another ball over the top into Kostov. And he gets his second of the game. A brace for the striker. And is he going to start firing on all cylinders a little more regularly now? That's brilliant stuff. Great to see him scoring goals. And uh, it might be time to start thinking about some changes, actually, and keeping players fit. Uh, for league action. Um, I'm going to bring L Gagliardi on. He's been he's had a really good start to this season. Uh, it does have to be said. And I'm going to bring Yankov on in the box-to-box -box role for D'Alessandro. Um, ball coming in. Wow, that was a really good free kick. We actually play a box-to-box -box and a deep line playmaker both on support now. Um because we just have better players and I feel like we can do it. So I've just changed those two roles up to just try and get more bodies forward and score more goals. And today is a is a really, really good example of how it works when it works. Uh, click in now into Tasev, into Yankov, back to click in. That's a beautiful cross. Good header, but easily saved by the goalkeeper. Um, can we win that header? Yes, we can. Tassev now, ball over the top, it's in to Kostov, can he finish off the hat-trick? He can, and he does it with a plum. it's a beautiful hat-trick from Kostov, and he's going to make himself an instant hero if he plays football like this uh, for, for, for Ludogretz. We're going to bring Zhivkov on, we're going to let him have that stand innovation, and we'll let Zhivkov have a run out in this Champions League fixture. It has been all ludicrous this game, hasn't it? That's a beautiful hat-trick from Costa as well. A really, really well-taken hat-trick. Um, what are we looking at? 19 shots, 7 on target, 15 to go. Um, and I, you know, I don't really need to play the second leg, if we're being completely honest. Are they going to beat us 4-0? They've not really looked like they've got it in them to score four goals. But we will do it. We will do it as part of today's episode. Because I said I'm going to. Um, five minutes to go. Isn't it funny how we take Kostov off and um, no more goals. 
and a really good performance. Four different players made assists in the game as well. That's really special. Really, really special. That's a great team performance. Okay, my friends, so we are back for the second leg of this Champions League uh, game. But I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to be at the club in the next episode. Um, something that really, really terrible has happened between that fixture and this one. And it is that the board have gone above me and accepted an offer, a really measly offer, in my opinion, for Topazov. Now, it gave me the option to basically say to the board, look, you need to reconsider this, reject the bid. And they said, no, we, we're going to accept it. And that's that, basically. They've accepted a bid of £6 million um, up front. Um, I can't remember what the add-ons were. I think it went up to about eight and a half. He has a £30 million release clause in his contract. I put it there to protect the player. Now, the trouble you've got with this is, if the board are going to go above you and they're going to sell your best players off, how are you ever supposed to build anything? How are you ever supposed to keep hold of a unit of really good players and build a quality team? I just don't really understand it. And I just think that that bid of £6 million up front, what can I actually do with that? I've got I've still got to get another right-sided player. Am I really going to, with £6 million, going to be able to get a player of Topazov's level to replace him? And I'm kind of getting a bit bored. I'm kind of getting a bit bored of having to deal with this board constantly being stingy with the cash and selling off the assets. This isn't the first time this has happened. Uh, they've accepted bids in the past. Just fortunate for me, the players have rejected the contract. I just can't see Topazov rejecting the opportunity to go and play for Reims in France. I just can't. And he's had such a good start and he's such an important member of the team. But we'll play this game. We'll get through it. And then we'll just see what happens next episode. We will because... I don't know how I feel about that. It's really, really annoyed me. And I just feel like we've got some really good players joining the football club now. And you're going to now get rid of one of my star players just because you see a few pound signs. It's very annoying. Um, so there's trouble. There's trouble at the football club, in my opinion. Petrov in goal. Iradi Tassev, fullback. Malinov, Adanov are going to play centre-back. Delessandro, Pozgai going to play in midfield. We're going to bring Clicking in left. Topazov right. Could potentially be his last game for the club. Uh, Gagliardi is going to play through the middle. And Kostov up top. After the game's finished, I'll cover a little bit of transfer biz because some stuff's happened. Uh, but yeah, let's do it. So here we go, ladies and gents. Uh, second leg of this uh <laughs> of this Champions League tie and we're just going to get cracking with it we're 4-0 up we really should move through to the next round and really we've just got to keep everything crossed that Topazov does the right thing and rejects that contract because if not I, I do think I'm going to go I do think I'm going to resign and I'm going to move on and try and find a better club because you know I'm I, I can't be having this every time I have a good player the board go do you know what we're going to sell them I just can't operate like that um because the next one will be Gagliardi because he's he's a star player he's quality they'll probably sell him we've got Malinov they'll probably sell him he's a star player and if you lose the star players what's the point in signing good players uh to you know to play with them as they're in and that's a good save and they've started really well haven't they but yeah what's the point in signing all these good players to complement what you've already got if they're just going to sell them off i wouldn't mind if the offer they accepted was like 15 million pound that's a lot of money you can do a lot with that i can't do anything with six million i just can't it's just not enough money and they won't give me all of it either they only give me 70 percent of any transfer fees made so again you're not going to get the full six and what am i going to be able to bring in how am i going to be able to replace him um it's not good it's not good in my opinion that's uh, an awful thing to do is to go above your manager and sell off one of your players like that and um I'm not happy about it. I'm, I'm a bit sick of dealing with this board anyway. I was surprised they only gave me five million in the summer. What am I supposed to do with five million pound? Uh, it is what it is, though. Um, we're not playing all that well, are we, in the second leg? But the job was done in the first, so I'm not too surprised that that is the case. And, uh, you know, we, we're, we're pretty poor on the road in Europe. It does have to be said as well. Um Kostov's not having a good game. He's having a bit of a struggle in this one. He's just coming off the back of a really good performance in the league, though. Uh, that's to Iradi. Back to Pozgai. He's going to come this way to Tasev now, who tried to go past the man. It's not worked out for him. D'Alessandro on the ball, and that's a really sloppy pass. And it's 3v2. It's a great touch. If he doesn't score, that is a terrible, terrible effort in the end because D'Alessandro has gift-wrapped them the chance to get in the game, and they've not taken it there. Good header out 
from Adanov. Uh, Cl- is it Clickin? I think his name is how we uh, or Kilkin. He's going to get on the ball. He's going to drive forward. Uh, he can't go past his man though, and he forces a corner. That's really good actually. That counter attack and play there to force the corner for us. Um, you just need to get a ball in the box, and he does. It was a really good delivery in my opinion. Malinov, he he sweeps up, cleans up, and it's still nil nil. Um, as long as we don't lose four nil, it doesn't really matter, does it? This game. Uh, point the finger and just tell him, come on, get it sorted. Kostov is uh, Kostov and Gagliardi, the two players looking most likely to be bought off uh, at the moment. Uh, that's a good piece of play from them. It's good football. So ball in's not can't come to much. As Tassiv now on the ball tries to bring it out for us at the back. Still got it into Kilkin again. Now into Gagliardi. Now into Delessandro. Gagliardi. He's going to drive forward. He's been really good at the start of this season. It's into Kostov. It's a great ball in. And uh, Topes gets there just before the keeper. Is that going to be the last goal he ever scores for the Tex? Oh, my God. I probably sound like a broken record now, but I'm so gutted. The thing with it is, with a player like that, he come through the ranks as well. It's always so much more, you know, it's so, so special when players come through as regens and come through the ranks and you do that. They've grabbed themselves a goal. It's a well-taken goal from the, from the corner that we've, um, we've not been on it, have we? We've really not been on it in this one. Gagliardi is going to make way. I'm going to bring, uh, bring Lesko on for him and I'm going to bring Kostov off. I know he's just got the assist, but I'm going to bring him off and, um, we do have a highlight taking place at the minute, but we'll give him a bit of a rest. That's the ball down the line. Nothing's going to come of that. Adanov into Iradi, it's a Poz guy, D'Alessandro, out to Kilkin, good stuff, good football, that's actually a really nice hung up ball there, Topes finds Poz guy, and unfortunately White saves it for, uh, for our opposition in the goal. They've been better, to be fair to them, they've actually been a lot better, a bit more, bit more organised, harder to break down in this, uh, in this second leg, haven't they? Right, goal kick. Nothing's going to come of that. Tassev deals with it very, very well. That's into Topazov. Now into Pozgai. He's going to spread wide into Iradi. He's going to go inside. This is really good football. Kilkin. Ah, oh, just needed to be in front of him. And uh, it's come to nothing in the end. It just needed to be in front of the fullback. And he was uh, and he was in on goal, wasn't he? Good defending there from Adanov. Uh, <clears throat> Iradi now. They've done well to win that ball back. Two very good slide tackles as Iradi kind of was, I don't know, I'm in an R in on the ball and this is going to be a goal. You can just tell when they're coming and we've not been good in this game. Um, We've really not been good. I'm going to go attacking, see if we can get back into it. I know we've got the aggregate lead, but winning games breeds lots of confidence. I don't really see what's wrong with that. Zhivkov scored a goal. He wasn't offside. He was nowhere near offside. Um, 15 to go 5-2 on aggregate we're losing a game in this uh, stage of the competition that rarely happens lots of unrest though at the club I think that does have to be said and uh, I think we're going to lose this one I think we're going to lose this game and that's a surprise to me it is after the domination of the first leg Um, But we go for one aggregate regardless, whether or not we're here to do it, we'll wait and see. So my friends, confirmation of the team we're going to be facing is the New Saints, um, who are a Welsh team, I do believe. So that's interesting. I actually think that's a relatively easy path into the group stages. Uh, Probably the easiest path we've had into the group stages so far. Uh, But yeah, that will potentially be next episode, but we'll wait and see what happens. I'm I'm, I'm annoyed at the loss. I'm annoyed at the uh, Topes thing. And that is going to be the next game. Like, it's literally a few days away, but... Um, I'm not going to promise we're going to be here. I'm just going to throw that out there because I feel so passionate about this Topazov transfer. I feel like I owe it to myself to not put up with this. And I know it's just a game, but the board can't keep doing this. They can't keep doing this to me. Um, and I'm getting a bit sick of it. So, yeah, I'm not going to promise we'll be back for that New Saints game. I'm going to leave it there. I'm just going to leave it. 
and we'll wait and see. As far as transfers are concerned, the Verdanikov deal was completed. Um, yeah, 1.1 million. He went to Dynamo Dresden in the end. Uh, and we did bring in uh, this Ivanov lad who was that youngster I was talking about. Put him in for next to nothing. He's going to go down in the youth academy and we'll just see if we can uh, turn him into something. But do you know what? I just don't know what to make of it. We'll see what happens for next episode. Um, as far as the league game was concerned, we won it by three goals nil. Really, really easy there. The office is Gagliardi, Topazov and Kostov. Got on the uh, score sheet and the league early doors looks like this. Four played, four wins, 12 points. Lesky Sofia seemed to be the team trying to catch us up. But uh, we'll wait and see what happens, my friends. I'm just going to leave it there. Nothing more needs to be said. So there you are, my friends. We're done and dusted as trouble is brewing at the beginning of a brand new season. I'm so, so annoyed with it. And I know I've said that many a time, but I genuinely feel like resigning um, from the football club if it goes through. We just got to hope and pray it doesn't. Uh, but my friends, I am done and dusted. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed it as well. The more likes we get, the more chance there is of eyes on this channel and on these videos. But uh, I salute you all, my friends. I'll see you on the next one. Whether we are at Latex or not, we will be back. But until then, stay safe, stay humble. See you next time.